Dr. Nurja Akurali, and I'm a family physician. The artwork that I'm drawn to each time I visit the Aga Khan Museum and give tours is the manuscript from the Canon of Medicine, a five-volume encyclopedia of medicine by Ibn Sina, also known as Avicenna, written in 1052. The nostalgia of this manuscript takes me back to my medical school days and how grueling it was. The copy displayed at the museum is the fifth volume of the Encyclopedia on Drugs and Pharmaceuticals. This led me to explore the background of the manuscript and the history of Ibn Sina. He was born in 980. As a child, he attended a school in Bukhara where he studied the Quran as well as Persian and Arabic literature. Learning occurred by rote, which for him was a very boring way of learning. Books were rare at this time, and he was able to commit his learning to memory. At the age of 16, he decided to study medicine, the most practical of sciences, and something that would earn him money while he continued to study the other sciences. Medicine, according to him, was not a difficult science, and he excelled in it in a very short time. He earned his living by treating the princes and the wealthy, while for the ordinary people, it was free. The Samanids, who were the ruling dynasty in Iran and Uzbekistan, were great patrons of learning, and they founded a library, which was said to contain many books on various subjects. However, Libraries were a closely guarded treasure as books were scarce, expensive, and written and bound by hand. A breakthrough came when Ibn Sina was asked to treat the ruler, Nur Ibn Mansur, who had fallen seriously ill, and the illness had baffled his doctors. Ibn Sina was able to cure him. With the offer of a reward, Ibn Sina asked for permission to visit the library. Opening the library doors was like opening the doors to Aladdin's cave. It was full of wonders and it opened up all kinds of opportunities for him. The translation movement from Greek, Persian and Sanskrit into Arabic that occurred in the 8th century under the patronage of the Muslim dynasties facilitated the learning of pre-existing knowledge and by building on it and amplifying it created new knowledge. He then began to write the Canon of Medicine, where he sheds light on his many years of experience working as a doctor. He made many advances in medicine, such as using evidence-based medicine, as well as conducting research, something we talk about today. Other advances he made, which are very topical today with COVID-19, was that diseases could be contagious, and could be spread through air, soil, and water, and that quarantine could help minimize the spread of these diseases. The fifth volume currently at the museum laid out specific rules for drug testing, and this has become the basis of the foundation of medical drug trials today. The canon has had such an impact on medicine that because of its content and arrangement, it served as the standard textbook of medicine in Muslim and European lands for over 500 years. He emphasized love for learning and acquiring knowledge wherever it came from, as well as sharing of that knowledge. This manuscript takes me on a nostalgic journey and has been a catalyst that continues to inspire me down the path of lifelong learning. It also reminds me that grueling times are temporary and that knowledge is forever.